Hello, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video I'm going to talk to you about grid initialization, looking at the basic features and looking at some of the new features that we've added in 1.1. Now here we have this basic scene with some ground and not much else, so I'm just going to start out by adding myself a game world. As you probably know, adding a game world will also add a grid by default. Um, so I now have my grid. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to do my set up my mappings. So I'm just going to map my terrain layer here to the terrain layer that I've created in the scene. So um, that's set up. I'm just going to finish off by resizing my grid so that it matches my terrain. There we go. Grid is ready. So I can start my scene and everything works as it should. So Basically, the first point to make about grid initialization is that you don't need to worry about it. Um, it's taken care of uh, at one time when you start the scene or load the scene, the grid will be initialized once it is enabled. Now, there are situations where this may take some time. It, it will take time no matter what, um, but how long it takes depends on the size of the grid, obviously. What happens during initialization is that the grid will establish first its matrix, that's all the small cells that you see represented here, and it will also establish a height map that it uses to know the heights across of the grid. So this takes some time. And uh, as I said, the larger the grid, the more time it takes. However, when you have a situation like this, where you have your game world and you have your um, your grid set up at the same time, it's not something that you are loading into your scene dynamically at runtime. Then the only hit you will get is a small startup penalty where the grid initializes. So for the most part, that's fine. You don't need to do more. However, if you experience too long of a load time, if you have big grids, so many grids, whatever, and, and it's too much of a load time, you can opt uh, into using this option, baking the grid. Now, baking the grid will save, will actually do what the grid initialization does when it starts up. It will simply do that at the same time, saving all the data, height map data, and so forth, in the scene file and it will simply read from that data then when it starts the scene. Now this is quite a bit quicker than doing the initialization because it skips all the raycasting but it also bloats up the scene file a bit because it has to save all that data somewhere and it does that by default in the scene so you will get a larger scene file if you have baked grids. So it's a trade-off, you'll have to see what best matches your scene and your game. Now one additional um, use of baking a grid um, has to do with visualization. I'm just going to touch briefly on that. Um, as you probably already know, we have this grid visualizer which shows the grid in the sign view. You can see the small cells in this case, because we are in layout mode, I can see all the cells. Um, but there's also an option to go into accessibility mode. Accessibility mode is the mode where each of the lines show where a given unit can walk. Now, as you can see, this actually right now shows that I can walk all over the grid, which isn't really accurate because I have this platform in the middle of the grid and I can't walk across that platform because it's raised. So why doesn't it show it correctly? Well, the reason is that to show this correctly, it needs to know the height data. And to know that, it will need to have generated the height data. And since the grid needs to be reevaluated at some intervals, it is quite heavy to have to do that all the time, basically. So to help this, when you bake the grid, it will work as it should. So baking the grid in design mode will allow you to see accessibility lines in design mode. Okay, So this is purely an optimization thing not to kill uh, performance in design mode. In run mode, it doesn't matter. It will show up just fine 
in run mode because obviously the grid is initialized upon startup. Okay, so that's just a brief um, note about the grid visualizer if that confuses people why it doesn't show up correctly. Try to bake the grid. You can always unbake it afterwards once you're happy with all your changes in design mode. All right, so that basically covers um, the features, then the features that have been there since point uh, 1.0. So the next thing to look at are the new features that we've added in 1.1. So, so far we've looked at a scene where we have everything defined at design time, the game world, the grid, and everything is in our scene at design time. However, you may need to have grids loaded at runtime in your game. That could be because you need to generate your terrain dynamically and then you want your grid obviously to initialize after the terrain has been initialized um, and doing that at runtime well it will act exactly the same as it does uh, in this case however when you do it at runtime it will be more noticeable when the grid uses time to initialize so that will effectively give you a drop in the frame rate if the grid is big enough. So to avoid that and also to add the option to prefab grid so that you can create tile like stuff where you have a tiles that you can load in at runtime um, from prefabbed uh, tiles with grids on them, um, we've added a few features. And I'm going to show you um, first we'll look at how prefabbing works and after that I'm going to show you how you can do stepped initialization or delayed initialization of grids um, that will load balance the initialization over a couple of frames to reduce or to completely eliminate um, frame rate issues. So let's look at prefabbing. Now it's already possible to prefab or it has been um, possible since 1.0 um, I'm just going to put in this tile here, which is identical to what I've already had in my scene. But just to show you, this is just a simple tile uh, with some geometry underneath, and then it has a grid on it. Now this one is prefab, right? And it it works just fine. The problem with this, of course, is that as I just mentioned, when it loads up at runtime, it will initialize the grid, and it will take the time the grid needs to initialize potentially hitting your frame rate. Now what we've added in this version 1.1 is that instead I can bake my prefabs. Now in order to achieve that um, what you can do now is you can save the grid data when you bake the grid you can save that data as a separate asset because obviously you can't have your data saved in the scene when you want it to sit on a prefab. So what you do is instead of just baking it you first click this or check this where it says store grid data as asset and then you bake your grid. Now in order to bake these prefabs actually you need to do it on the prefab and not on the, um, on the um, instance in the scene. Um, so I'm just going to do it on my prefab. I'm going to say store grid data as asset. And for convenience I've given it a friendly name because this will be used to name my data. Now if I bake my grid, you can see a small uh, file appear down here. This is my grid data. And I can just move that into my grids folder here just to have it cleaned up nicely. Um, and there we go. I have now a prefab with a baked grid on it. Now to see this, or the difference between these two, um, we're just going to switch into Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio I've created this very simple behavior where I just have the option to load in these prefabs that I've just created. Initially, it's just the first two there that we're going to look at. And 
what it does is it simply instantiates this prefab and loads it. That's it. So back in Unity, I'm just going to first remove these two, and we want to load them dynamically. So now when I start my scene, oh wait a second, I just need to attach my behavior to my scene, otherwise it won't work. Um, scripts, doop, doop, there we go. So now that I, when I start my scene, I can click these keys that I defined. This was a tile that um, was not baked, and over here I can put a, a baked tile. Now we can't really see the impact this has because we have no moving units, we can't really see any fra frame rate hits. But if I drop down the stats, we should be able to see a slight frame rate hit when I instantiate the unbaked grid. So there you go. See, it drops down to 35, so it pretty much halves the frame rate for for the time where, where I instantiate this one. Now, doing the same thing with the baked grid, it doesn't really impact the frame rate. Right, so prefabbing will give you um, baking combined with prefabbing will give you much better performance in cases where you want to dynamically instantiate uh, geometry with grids on them at runtime. So, um, the last option we have. Well, of course, baking is all good, but if your grids get big enough, um, even baking the grid or even using baked grid data still takes a bit of time to initialize. Um, so if you have big tiles and, and you see that even with baked prefabs you still have a, a frame rate hit, you have a second option of initialization and we'll look at that now. Okay, so um, to do this step initialization or delayed initialization, I'm just going to introduce one more of these prefabs. Um, again, I want to bake my data. I can I can also just leave it as is. Step or delayed initialization will work with both unbaked and baked grid data. It will just take longer if you don't bake it. Um, so we're going to bake it in this case. Now, um, first thing is to select the prefab. We want to do it down here. So this is the first thing. We already know that. But the second thing is this new setting here that says automatic initialization. Now this is checked by default and this means that the grid will initialize when it is enabled. So when you, if you use it as a prefab, when you load the, the grid or um, the game object with the grid on it into the scene, it will initialize at that point. Now what you can do is you can remove the tick in that and what this means now is that it will not initialize by itself. It will only initialize when you ask it to initialize. And the benefits of that I will show you in a second. I'm just going to bake it first. There we go. Um, and we can just clean that up there and remove it again from here. So we're ready um, to show the initialization feature in Visual Studio. Now down here, as I said, I didn't show you that before, but this is what actually happens when you instantiate a prefab. It just instantiates it, adds it to the scene. Now the second part of this looks at if the grid is automatically initialized, and if it's not, it will call initialize on that grid. Now what the initialize method does is that it initializes the grid, but it only uses a number of milliseconds per frame. And once it's done with its initialization, it will call back and tell you, I'm done initializing, you can now start using the grid. So let's start by maybe letting it use 8 milliseconds per frame. And as you can see, the callback in this case simply debug locks to the console so that we can see what happens. You would obviously 
want to do something once your grid has initialized um, and start using it. But for now we're just going to save that, go back in Unity and start the scene. Now if I instantiate this type of grid I will get a few messages down here. As you can see it says it has started the initialization at 4.254 4, and it has ended it at 4.32. So almost one tenth of a second it has used um, on initialization. So this is quite long but the reason it is using this long is that it only uses 8 milliseconds per frame. And now to show that if we half this and say okay you can only use 4 milliseconds per frame now what we would expect when we run it again is for the time to actually double. So if I put it in here you can see it started at 2.35 and ended at 2.5. So it is it is actually in effect doubled because the other one was not quite um, one tenth. So this is about two tenths of a, a second that it has used to initialize. Of course you can control how many milliseconds you want it to use. You can also go all out and just let it use the whole frame. Um, but well then it's probably a little bit moot to use that initialization method. Okay um, so that's it stepped or delayed initialization will allow you to initialize even very large grids without taking a frame rate hit. Of course you will need to do it at a point where it will get initialized in time for you to be able to use it. You can use it once you get the callback and the code right here. So the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is um, cleanup of grids already loaded in the scene. Now if you have a scene that uses for instance these tiles and you will load lots of these tiles at runtime, this can really add up in memory. Now if I just punch in loads of tiles all over the place, this will obviously take up some memory. And if the grids are large enough, it will take up some memory. Now probably a game that would do like this would probably disable some of the grids. They would not be needed. Units would only be at some uh, on some grids at a time, so other grids could be disabled while they are not there. Um, but the default behavior, just disabling um, a grid, doesn't release any memory. So it will just be disabled and not work, but it will still be there in memory. Um, so what we've added in the latest version is the ability to disable the grid and also clean up the memory. Basically it will de-initialize the grid so that it just goes back to as it were before you started or before the grid was loaded. So the example of that is the last piece of code here. Um, so here I get my grid and if it's enabled I will disable it explicitly by calling this disable method on the grid component. And as mentioned this will both disable setting enabled in, uh, equal false and it will also um, remove the memory it uses. Once disabled you can re-enable it simply by setting enable to true, which will then use normal initialization. Um, or you can, as we just saw, you can use this uh, delayed initialization method, which will then do it gradually over a few frames. And um, that's about it. There's not much to show about the, the release, because um, can't really see that. Um, but it will happen. Um, well, we could have shown it in the profiler, but it takes a bit of time before the garbage collector kicks in and collects it. Um, but it does work. <laughs> um, so that's all from us for now. Um, you can get one one in um, the asset store if you haven't already. And happy coding.